Now, you could assemble this whole thing and paint everything together. That's fine, you know, if you want to do that. Maybe it saves a little bit of steps or something. Um, but I'm going to paint things separately, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, with the things that are shiny, the shinier, you know, chromed metal, I guess, or whatever they are, or if you happen to get stainless steel, which is a little bit of an overkill, it's a little bit more expensive. Um, you're going to want to take anything that is, the, is the, the mild steel here, like these bars that we cut or the rail, and you're going to want to clean them with, with um, some acetone. And what the acetone does is, you know, prior to painting, I mean, if you're just leaving them plain, you can leave them plain. But prior to painting, the, the acetone basically just kind of gets all the grease and any loose junk that's on there. It erases, you know, most of the silver, yeah, it erases the silver Sharpie that I was using to mark everything and all that. So I'll get all these cleaned up and everything. Um, and then what we're going to do is I'm going to talk about the, the paint and the primer next. But see now I'm on a roll and I just want to get these three done. I still have to get or I have to get the other longer board, um, uh, you know, not board. I keep saying board. Um, the longer piece of steel for the rail. I'm going to have to do that one. That's going to stretch all over the place. So I'm probably going to use a piece of cardboard behind it when I spray. And you can see that the two doors are behind me. They're stacked one on top of each other with some spacers in between. And I'm going to definitely. Um, cover those uh, with a sheet before I start any spray paying, spray painting in here. Um, so that's that. Okay, these are pretty much clean. They feel squeaky clean. Um, some of the dirt comes off on the rag. You can see it's kind of dirty. Um, this is reasonably clean, actually. Most of the stuff I do is, uh, you know, pretty dirty. And by the way, this is, um, I think it's cold rolled steel. I always forget the difference. The, the cold rolled steel has mill scale deposit on it and the hot rolled doesn't or vice versa. So you're going to still get some scaling on here, but, but it's also less expensive. So that's why we get it. We can, we can deal with a little bit of roughness on there. So once the mild steel portions are cleaned with acetone, and again, you don't have to clean these, these chrome pieces or whatever, the chromed stuff um, unless they got grease on them or dirty but the the acetone helps remove all the grease and everything um, and then I want to talk about two different products here that, that I use a lot um, and again this was told to me by a, a welder friend of mine um, who's been doing this stuff a long time ago or a long time and he told me this a while ago um, about this self etching primer so when things are etched you know a lot of people think of terms of acid uh, in terms of etching things like if you're going to paint concrete um, it's always wise to etch the concrete with a muriatic acid or something like that and basically etching is just basically it it pits the surface um, a little bit and it's like using sandpaper it's almost like um, like acid is like a liquid sandpaper and what it does is it just gets rid of all the, the crap and it makes a uh, little pits here and there and that that gives it a little bit of a grip for the paint to finally, um, you know, adhere to the surface. If you don't do it and you try painting like a very smooth surface um, or a shiny surface, as you well probably have experienced, you know, the paint will flake off or come off because it doesn't stick to those surfaces, you know, readily. Uh, so we always use a self-etching primer and self-etching just means you don't have to do anything to this steel. I don't have to sand it or grind it or make it kind of whatever the, the primer the chemical in the primer does the etching for me, and that will allow the top coat to stick much, much better. Um, I think it lasts a little longer than powder coating, but, you know, that's just me. Um, powder coating can be expensive. If you want to have all these powder coated, you certainly can. You can take them to a shop that does that. I don't do any powder coating here. Um, but in any case, the next product that I'm going to use is just, these are both Rust-Oleum products, by the way. Um, and this is a hammered paint. So this is a black finish. Um, it will give the appearance of, um, I don't know, kind of like that, that dimpled, hammered, um, kind of rough appearance, but it'll be a little bit glossy, so it looks really kind of cool. It, looks, it fits with this like rustic theme and everything like that with these barn doors. So you can use the hammered. You can certainly use high gloss or flat or 
you know, a lot of people like to use flat, but we've used um, some hammered and other furniture that we've made for this client. So we're going to continue that theme and use the, uh, the hammered paint. So I'm going to go ahead and get um, the doors dropped off behind me. I'll clean some of this stuff up and then I'm going to come back and we'll just do a quick coat of the primer on this stuff. And, um, and, uh, and then that will be it until we hang the doors. I'm kind of in the middle of doing stuff here, but I wanted to explain a few things as usual. So in order to cover these wheels, so um, obviously I want most of the wheel of paint, but I don't want to try, I want to try to get, leave any paint from getting in here. Um, I just don't want any, you know, particulate primer or paint to gum up the smooth flow of the bearings. So what I'm going to, well, all I'm doing really is I'm just taking a piece of tape that is just a little wider than the, than the round portion here. And I'm just kind of pushing it in there and I'm just going to take a little knife and kind of cut around the inside, holding it down with my, my finger so it doesn't like move all over the place on me. And then just peel it up and uh, then I've got a nice kind of hole in the tape, but you know, it's covered and it's good enough, you know, to make sure that no paint gets out of there. So let me just finish up these two. And as I'm finishing up these two, um, you can see here that the screws in front, the the um, the bolts in front of me, the hex hex screws, um, are um, they're thick enough because of the diameter to kind of stand up on their own, and um, so they're doing that. Now I you don't want to get um, spray paint or primer on the threads particularly, but I've decided that I'm going to spray them first and cut the threads off later, and that way. Um, it doesn't matter if I get paint on these bottom threads because they're going to be they're going to be gone. And just got one more here, I think. Yeah. Um, you can see that the screws and the spacers for the for the three eighths of an inch, those are um, just embedded in some a styrofoam block I had. I mean, you know, I, I, I use Amazon a lot, and I I keep uh, I I keep all that shipping stuff, the filler that they that they give to me, not only because um, I ship my own stuff out if I make something for a client, um, and we do have a little like online store, but you know, it doesn't have a lot of stuff on it right now. But anyway, so I keep all that packaging stuff, and um, it comes in handy, like with this styrofoam block. Um, so you can see here in this block, I've got the I've got uh, six of these, which is really all that's needed. Although I drilled a few extra holes, which I'll explain during the installation, and I've put the spacer on it. Again, I've protected most of the threads here in the block of styrofoam. I'm not worried about the a little bit of paint that gets on these threads because nothing's going to be screwing up this high. I'm not going to have to fit a bolt on there later. It's simply going to be you know, uh, uh, the piece of steel and a spacer and a washer and another washer. And so it's going to go right into the wall. Doesn't, doesn't matter at all. The rest of this stuff, um, I'm just going to go ahead and set out like so. And I've got, let's get this out of the way and this out of the way because I have spray painted many things by accident and some not by accident. Um, you always want to wear gloves. Now I've got a decent ventilation in here, so I'm just going to do these first few without a mask so I can talk. Um, but after I shut the camera off, I will definitely put on a breathing mask, like a respirator, not just the, not just the, um, uh, white, you know, uh, cotton ones or whatever they are, the, the white ones that you see that people use for drywall dust. If you can smell the paint or the primer through your respirator, then you don't have the right respirator. And uh, you need to get one that has like the little air filters in there. And when that thing is sealed around your face, you should not smell it uh, at all. Because remember, if you can smell it, you're breathing it in. So um, in any case, I've got my all my washers here. Now, I have this spool of paper here that's on the side that I just pull up the paper over the table. Um, and I'm just going to do these, you know, as they are and um, get them all laid out. And then, I'm, you know, when they're dry and this stuff dries in a few minutes, I mean, it's really not, uh, it doesn't take that, that much of dry time to do so that I'm just going to like flip all these over, you know, after I spray them and everything. So I'm just going to lay those out. I don't need these um, and everything. This is an extra one. I got 
most of this stuff there. I'm going to go back and I'll do the um, one and a half inch ones or the half inch ones uh, a little bit later so that you can, you know, you don't need to see me spray everything, but this is just generally the bulk. I just want to kind of give you the, I don't know, the tour, if you will, about how to get this stuff on in a good way. Um, I don't know if you can see those screws up there, but I'm just going to go ahead and kind of arrange this stuff in a way that I can spray without too much overspray or waste. Okay, and then we'll get these off to the side. And you're, this is kind of an old can, so I'll wait. But you really want to, you know, shake this stuff for a good minute. So we've sprayed this enough, and you basically just want to hold it about 10 inches away. You know, you don't want it too close because otherwise it goops up and it runs and then it's laid on really thick. Um, you don't need really thick coats of this stuff. You just need to make sure it's covered and gray by the time it's done. Um, and you want to make sure, now the back sides are like, eh, you know, you don't have to get them if they're not going to be seen, but I'm just going to do it for completeness, at least with the primer. Um, and then all you're going to do is give it a light dusting and then... And then kind of flip them over or turn them over, turn them around and kind of just do the other. That's the other good thing about, um, you know, putting them in like a little block of styrofoam is you don't have to, you know, do too much to them. And then I'll go spray these guys. You know, this is kind of like, yeah, whatever. But maybe it helps to see some of it. And you'll always notice that I shut off the sprayer. Like after I get over to one side, I shut it off and then I go back on. Uh, sorry, I got some styrofoam. That stuff is the worst. It's like static electricity. Um, you know, I always stop it because, and I start it so that in at, in the end, if there's not a big like gout that comes out it's not going to gum up the work and that's just a habit I got from paint spraying like um, walls and you know furniture and bookcases and everything else and it just kind of kind of helps um, so then we'll get these guys I'm not and that's really all there is to it and then when this stuff dries I mean follow the manufacturers the manufacturers, you can tell them from Chicago, huh? Um, follow the manufacturer's instructions and, uh, you know, wait till it dries the right amount of time and then you're just free to, you know, if you need to sand them a little, you can sand them very lightly and then, um, oh, forgot these little edges down here. And then uh, you can go ahead and then put the, the paint cop, uh, the, the top coat on them. Um, obviously, I'm going to flip these, change the paper, flip them, do them again so that I get the bottom out. Um, it's going to look really sharp, you know, um, black and everything like that. So I'm really, really excited uh, to get these guys painted up and this, this hardware installed, which will be the next video that you see. So, All right, and that's about it. I mean, these are... I'm going to get the other sides, obviously, but you don't need to see me watch all that. And these are already dry up here, you know, almost, uh, just about. <laughs> so um, once that's done, then you're going to flip them over, do the same thing again, make sure you clean it up, you know, give them, give them time to dry, and please use ventilation, um, adequate ventilation. That's key. I'm only not using it on this quick stuff so that I can... Uh, you know, talk to you at the same time. Plus, I've got a big heating fan and it moves everything out um, to an open window, which is over there. So, uh, in any case, um, that's pretty much it. All you're going to do then is come back with the paint. I'll sh maybe I'll show you a little bit of that and then that's it. Then we're ready to hang everything up.